Good morning. Oh, you're a bit asleep this morning. Good morning. That's better. Um, a very warm welcome to worship um, on this special coronation weekend. It's good, isn't it, to see the sun out today um, to join in the celebrations. Didn't quite make it yesterday. Thank you, Seb. <laughs> Some sound effects to go with yesterday's rain. Um, as usual, uh, we'll begin with a few announcements. Uh, following the meeting this morning, the band will be splitting into two um, to go and play at the Harnell Lifehouse and also in Eastern Green to wish David Clifford a happy birthday. So there'll be uh, no city centre open air concert this lunchtime. Uh, next Sunday, we meet for worship, usual time, 10.30 in the morning. Uh, Majors Andrew and Valerie are leading. Uh, the meeting, another special occasion, uh, we're celebrating the enrolment of Fiona as a senior soldier, so something to look forward to there. Um, a final reminder of the announcement from Catherine now, uh, you're invited to join the senior band in rehearsal with special guest conductor Paul Sharman, that's this Thursday, 11th of May, 8 o'clock in the evening, here at the hall. Um, all are welcome to come along and play or listen. Um, if you are intending to play and haven't already done so, please do let Catherine know what instrument you play so she can organise the music for you. I think there's going to be lots of musicians here. Uh, to let you know also that next Saturday afternoon, the band will be putting on a programme of music at the Lenton's Lane Baptist Church Fate. Uh, that's on Lenton's Lane, Coventry. Uh, the band will be playing, the band will be playing between 3 o'clock in the afternoon and 4.30. A uh, reminder now, the next core ramble takes place. That's on the morning of Saturday, the 20th of May, and it's in the area of Western under Weatherley and Wappenbury. Uh, for further details, please look at the notice board near to the main doors or speak to Ian. Um, as ever, all welcome to go along, take part in that. Uh, plenty of messages today. A couple of messages from Val now. First of all, please see the poster on the notice board in the foyer for the divisional celebration taking place at the Litchfield Garrick Theatre on Wednesday the 7th of June, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, tickets priced £8 for that and they're available from DHQ or you can see Val. Um, also there's a poster giving details of the weekend gathering of the Christian Men's Fellowship. Um, that's near Swindon taking place the 23rd to the 25th of June. Um, some from here went to that last year. Um, if you think you might be interested, have a look at the poster, um, speak with Andrew or with Josh. A reminder now that on the afternoon of Sunday the 21st of May, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we'll meet here at the hall for the memorial service uh, for Malcolm Corbett. Uh, please do continue to keep Ruth and Martha, um, Beth, Paul, all of the family in your prayers um, over the coming days. And finally, to remind you that the funeral of Graham White uh, will take place uh, on Wednesday, the 24th of May, 1.30 in the afternoon at Canley Crematorium. Um, please continue to keep Geraldine and the family in your prayers at this time. OK, before I hand over to Majors Andrew and Valerie, I invite you to join me as I share a prayer. Dear God, thank you uh, for this opportunity to come together again in your name to worship you. On this very important weekend, uh, we want to take time to say thank you. Thank you for special times, for community, uh, for coming together, for celebration. And we ask this morning, Lord, that you'll bless our new king and queen, that you'll help them and all those in authority to lead with wisdom and with compassion, and that you'll help them to fulfil the plans that you have for them. Uh, we think just now of our time together here this morning, Lord. Uh, we ask that you'll be with us and help us each to take this time to really focus on you and to focus on what you mean to each one of us. Help us to listen to you, to draw close to you just now. Please bless Andrew and Valerie as they lead our worship. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for the announcements you've just given to us. And just a, an extra a plug about the uh, Men's Fellowship, which takes place in Swindon. Um, do have a chat if you think you might be interested in that, um, and I'll share some details of what took place last year. It's been a special weekend, hasn't it? Those of you who were in part of watching the coronation yesterday of King Charles III, 
It was a very um, typical British occasion, wasn't it? As uh, we do things like the pomp very well, don't we? Um, and it was good to be a part of that in terms of watching it on the TV or if you were part of something, an event by you, it was a, a good occasion, wasn't it? But this morning we continue with the King of Kings. Now, he's not going to come this morning, but we're going to invite the proper King of Kings to come into our presence this morning. I'm going to stand and we're going to sing the, uh, the, the opening song this morning. Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, who like thee his praise should sing. Praise him, praise the everlasting King. Let's stand if you can and we'll sing these verses straight through, please, my master. <laughs> with us the God of grace. As we come into our time of worship this morning, as we come into our time of prayer, people have been asked to share some prayers for our newly crowned King Charles III this morning. And as um, the music quietly plays of that worship song, King of Kings, Majesty, those prayers will be shared and then we'll sing through that refrain, and then we'll um, share a prayer together. But uh, first of all, let's listen to those prayers that's been put together just now. Thank you. Third, grant him your peace as he commits himself to your service. Give him strength and perseverance as he promises to serve us all as king. May he know you are walking with him day by day. Help him to fulfill his vows and promises. May he follow the example of Jesus, the ultimate king of kings. God bless the king. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for King Charles. We thank you for him, and we ask that you will lead and bless him as you did his mother, Queen Elizabeth. We thank you for the gifts you have given him and the years of public service he has already given. May he have wisdom in his decision-making. Enable him to lead well and give him advisors of insight and integrity. 
give him the energy he needs and may he be a voice for hope and justice. Lord, bless King Charles. In Jesus' name, amen. Everlasting God, we pray for our new king. Bless his reign and the life of our nation. Help us to work together so that truth and justice, harmony and fairness flourish among us. <coughs> Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle saviour, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, all within me falls at your throne. Shall we pray? Lord, thank you for those beautiful words. Reminder this morning that we come into this presence and we want to lay ourselves bare before you, allowing your spirit to fill this place. But more than that, personally, to fill each of our lives individually that we might know something of the living God within each of our lives this morning. And it's because of that desire that we live to serve your majesty, the King of Kings. And so, Lord, we would ask this morning that you would just come close to each one of us. And for these moments we spend in worship, Lord, just help us to put aside all the things that may distract us from hearing your voice this morning and just lay them at your feet right now Lord Jesus knowing that you are a God of miracles 
knowing that whatever we may be facing either today or in the days that lie ahead, we can place them in your hands right now. We pray, Lord, for those in our fellowship who are, are grieving in these moments, and we just pray, Lord, that your arm of comfort and strength and support will be around them in these moments. Those who are going through other difficulties, health issues perhaps, we could just ask the Lord that you'll give them strength and faith to know that you, as a great physician, will be there. But Lord, wherever we are facing these moments, Lord, just take them from us, we ask. Help us to just enjoy this time together. But more than that, as we leave this place, we know we've been in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So, Lord, I take everything that's been prepared for this service this morning and use it to glorify your name. We ask all these things in and through your precious name, the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. And now I look forward to the message given to us by the Young People's Band, please. band are going to play this morning um, is an arrangement of uh, the song And Can It Be to the tune of Sagina and the fourth verse of the song uh, is I guess a, a verse of testimony. No condemnation now I dread. Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him my living head and clothed in righteousness divine. Bold I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. that so much I didn't want to move. Andrew's going, Valerie, Valerie. <laughs> well done, that was lovely. Really, really appreciated that lovely message that came through from your music to us. Thank you, YP Band. 
Now, a little thought for our youngsters. So are you all listening? Yes? Did any of you watch the coronation yesterday? Perhaps you watched it on the TV, yeah? It was history in the making. And it was absolutely wonderful. Well, at least I thought it was. King Charles III is part of the history of the kings and queens in this country. And yesterday, he was crowned king. He became King Charles III when his mum, Queen Elizabeth II, died last September. But his coronation day is when he wears the crown, the special crown, for the first time. And this celebrates him becoming King Charles III. Now, King Charles was crowned in a very big church called Westminster Abbey down in London. And during the special service called the Coronation, it shows that King Charles has been chosen by God to be king and to serve the country and people. And that includes you and me. And if you watch the coronation or have seen any pictures, many will highlight how kings and queens in the past have been crowned and show that King Charles needs God to help him to be a good king. The promises that King Charles made affirms the sort of king he will be. And he asks God to help him keep his promises. Anointing special prayers were said, asking God to bless King Charles and help him to be a good king. And the bit that really hit home to me and actually made me shed, shed a tear was during the coronation ceremony, King Charles took off his fine robes, his kingly gowns, he then had special blessed oil put upon his head in the shape of a cross. But this was done in private. And if you were watching, you will have seen the screens that came around him. And all this part of the service happened to show that King Charles is an ordinary man like you and like me without all the, the gowns and the gold and the jewels, he is just an ordinary man who needs God's help to be our king. The cross is special to us as Christians, isn't it? It reminds everyone that the cross of Jesus that he died upon for all of us and all who will believe and uh, we believe that he is the king of kings. He is king, the Lord Jesus of all the world. And King Charles is beneath him because the king of kings is King Charles king. And we saw the cross shown in many different ways yesterday as part of the ceremony. And so I've got three pictures to show you. And the first picture is an orb that was presented to King Charles. And here it is as a picture. And there you see it's a golden ball with a cross on the top. And the ball stands for the world. And the cross is a reminder that to Christians, Jesus is king of the world and King Charles is king of our nation with the king of kings help. He was given a scepter and it's like a special stick and if you notice there at the top of it again we see the cross. Can you see it? And then we have the crown. 
And this is the crown that was used in the actual coronation. A crown full of jewels. But do you notice the crown has the cross again at the top of it too? The cross of Jesus is so important within our faith. Well, there was a lot of people celebrating and shouting, God save the king! God save the king! And our national anthem, the special song that we sing, also says, God save our gracious king. This is a prayer. It's a prayer asking God to save and to help King Charles. And I guess many people won't even realise that they're praying for the king when they sing the words or they shout out, God save the king. Lots of people will say it just as words. But for us and all Christians, it's a prayer asking God to help the king. I love that the cross of Jesus is at the centre of such an important ceremony seen around the world. And today we pray, God, save, protect and help the King. Amen. Amen. Now we're all going to give in our offering just now. Thank you. Lord, you are holy and we praise you just now. We thank you for all that you give to us and all that you do for us and all that you have done for us. And so as we give a little back, we pray that you will bless what has been given. We pray that it will be used to extend your kingdom here and bring more people into a knowledge of your love for them. So use it and bless it, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, the songsters commenced our worship this morning and uh, we sang a real song of praise to the King of Kings. 
But we're now going to sing the song, How Can I Keep From Singing? And as they come together, I'll share some of the words from the chorus. How can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say enough? How, ca how amazing is your love? How can I keep from shouting your name? I know I am loved by the King and it makes my heart want to sing. Say thank you to the songsters and thank you to Seb for your choice uh, this morning. That was wonderful. Now we're all going to sing together now and we're going to sing Our God Reigns. What a wonderful song. Let's stand and as we sing, we'll invite our youngsters to leave us for their activities this morning. Let's stand. <laughs>
God reigns. Hallelujah. Now, our Bible reading this morning is from John chapter 12, from verse 12. And um, it's a very, very familiar passage. It's about the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And you'll be sat there thinking, well, we had that on Palm Sunday. Well, we're allowed to have it again. <laughs> and, uh, and this just reminds us how the people shouted their praises to the King of Kings. So John chapter 12. The next day, the great crowd that had come from the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it as it was written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples didn't understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now, the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. We ask God to bless the reading from his word. Now we're going to turn to the message from the band. Thank you, Catherine.
Well, that was a very kingly march for us this morning, wasn't it? Thank you, band. Thank you, Catherine. Let's pray together. Lord, you bless us in so many different ways. And we have been blessed already this morning. But we ask a further blessing now upon your word. I ask that you will help us each to be focused on the message that Andrew has to share with us. As it's already spoken to his heart, may it speak to our hearts also. So help us to listen. Help us to be attentive and to receive what you want to say to us as individuals. And give us the courage to act upon what we hear. For we ask this in your name. Amen. In the uh, familiar reading which Barry shared from John 12, verses 12 to 19, John the Apostle is telling how Jesus is the King of Kings. It reminds us we here today as Christians must understand as well that Jesus is the King of Kings. So why and how is Jesus proven to be the King of Kings? Well, within these verses, it gives us four reasons that Jesus is proven to be the King of Kings. Evidence to prove that point. So in verses 12 to 13, his miracles and life declare him to be the King of Kings. In verses 14 to 16, he is a fulfillment of an Old Testament mosaic prophecy. And in verses 17 to 18, the eyewitnesses couldn't be kept quiet. And then the final verse, verse 19, we share that Satan's kingdom is threatened by him. Four points we're going to explore just now through God's word. So king of kings, because of his miracles. Well, verse 12 reads, The next day the crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. On the next day after Christ had been anointed with perfume by Mary, had rebuked Judas, and had eaten at Simon the leper's house, Many had come to the feast, and they were hearing the reports of Jesus' miracles, and this demanded a response from them. Jesus was viewed as a, a celebrity by all who had heard him. He became so famous, and these people believed eyewitness accounts. There were so many throughout the years of Jesus' ministry that saw him perform impossible miracles. But during this time, just how important were the testimonies of the eyewitnesses? What other testimonies did they have beside this? Well, the simple answer is none. So eyewitnesses' accounts were taken seriously from trustworthy sources especially whenever there were hundreds or possibly thousands in total who had witnessed these accounts. Then we consider verse 13 where it says, They took palm branches. They went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They believed Christ to be their victorious king. Though they wanted him to create an earthly kingdom, and even though they were incorrect in their view of how he would rule, he still proved, didn't he, to be the king of kings. Secondly, king of kings through the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Take note of verses 14 to 16, Jesus found a young donkey and he sat upon it. Do the gospel writers explain this in more detail? 
But all we need to know is that he rode in on a donkey. Look at verse 15. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion, it says. See your king is coming seated on a donkey's colt. This is a partial quotation of Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. Christ is fulfilling the Old Testament prophecy. Then if you realize but that the Old Testament contains nearly 300 prophecies about the coming Messiah. And all these were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Then verse 16. At first his disciples did not understand all of this. What is worth nothing here is that even though they didn't understand, they were still obedient to him. When Christ told them to get on a donkey, they listened and they responded in obedience. Likewise, whenever Jesus commands us by his word, we must respond in obedience. So they didn't understand. However, when Jesus died, was resurrected and ascended into heaven, when they saw him glorified, they remembered that these things were written of him. When they saw Jesus in all his glory, through his conquering of the grave, they remembered his fulfillment of Zachariah's prophecy. Thirdly, King of Kings, it's through the eyes of the witnesses. Jesus is proven to be the king of kings because the eyewitnesses couldn't be quiet. You don't blame them, do you? I couldn't be quiet either. I'd want to share the good news. But in verse 17, it says, Now the crowd that was with him, when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to spread the, the word, the good news. And those people who witnessed Jesus' resurrection of Lazarus trusted in him. And they witnessed who he was. They proclaimed Christ even at the risk of being locked up by the Pharisees and Sanhedrin. The witnesses couldn't keep quiet about Jesus. They simply testified of all that Jesus had done and these eyewitnesses wouldn't have continued had this been a lie they didn't they wouldn't have run around proclaiming Christ as the Messiah if they didn't believe it was so these people had seen Christ do miraculous supernatural things which only could be explained by admitting Jesus was the Christ the King of Kings. And finally, King of Kings threatening Satan's kingdom. Verse 19, the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Wow, they were threatened. They were perplexed with the Pharisees. They feared losing their power they were frantic. No matter what they had tried to do, they couldn't compete with this perfect living king. They feared for their own popularity with the people and were planning to murder him. Friends, the fact that Satan's kingdom was losing followers is also proof of the fact that Jesus is the Christ. The false, self-proclaimed judicial leaders of the Sanhedrin, the so-called rulers of the Jews, these little kings were losing authority and power to the king of kings, the lord of lords. Hallelujah. But we must follow the evidence. And if we do, there's no other answer then that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I feel certain of that, do you? 
His miracles, his fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies, the eyewitnesses, the fact that Satan is threatened by him has shown Christ as the King of Kings. His power of, over death and sin, the atonement for you and for me and the whole world is proof that he is the King of Kings. So my question to you this morning is, have you trusted him for your salvation? Is this how, how you and I describe the King, Christ Jesus, that you serve today? Over the years, there have been much speculation about the personal faith of King Charles. After a very public divorce and comments made about other religions, some have suggested that King Charles may not possess that same strong Christian faith as his mother did, the late Queen Elizabeth. But I was encouraged within his Christmas message last year, following his mother's death, our new king said the following... My mother's belief in the power of the eternal light was an essential part of her faith in God. But also her faith in people. And it's one which I share with my whole heart, he said that day. It's a belief in the extraordinary ability of each person to touch with goodness with compassion, the lives of others, and to shine a light in the world around us. This is the essence of our community and the very foundation of our society. As we've considered Jesus, who is undoubtedly the King of Kings, the King of Kings, Charles III, and the King over us all, may we in these days ask God to help our monarch to seek God's will for himself, his family, and the nation and the rest of the Commonwealth. And may we each know the Lord, the King of Kings, within our hearts, within our lives, and each seek to know his will for us. I'm going to turn again to that chorus that we sang during our prayer time. That chorus, King of Kings, Majesty, God of Heaven, living in me. Gentle Saviour, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end. All within me falls at your feet, your Majesty. I can but bow. I lay my all before you now. In royal robes, I don't deserve to live to serve your majesty. Allow these words to speak to you this morning. Maybe the first time you realize that he is the king of kings. And that you need to bow down in front of him right now in these moments. If that's the case, this place of prayer is always open. But in this moment, just where you are, allow these words to speak through you just now. Thank you.
as the uh, music plays, just be praying for our friend of the mercy just now. But also allow the Lord to speak to you in these moments. that first verse and chorus once again King of Kings Shall we pray? O oh Lord, reign in our hearts and live there as King of Kings. Take from us anything that hinders our service of you. O oh Lord, forgive us for those times when we make this time here all about us, seeking our own desires instead of allowing our worship to be totally consumed about you and through you. Because, Lord, you alone are worthy of our praise. On this special day, Lord, we pray for our new king, Charles III. We pray that he will acknowledge you as his king and that he will love you and serve you through the service of the nations and the commonwealth. Lord, with us this morning, hear our prayer, we ask. We pray these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. In closing this morning, we're going to sing that song. Wonderful counsellor, mighty God among us, everlasting father, prince who rules in peace. And that final verse goes on to say, King of kings, Lord of lords, Son of God, exalted, name above every name, Lamb upon the throne. This King will come again, the Father's only Son. No more a world in darkness, the light will come. Let's stand and sing these three verses through. <laughs>
And now our benediction together this morning. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. The Lord protect you in all your ways and prosper all your work in his name. Amen. God bless.